yes. B is bilab. Sorry, B is prefix. I is issue. L is law. A is application. C is conclusion. I repeat, huh? B is prefix. I is issue. L is law. A application. C conclusion. If you use this format, okay, you will not fail. Confirm. If, but your law must be sound. Like, you cannot simply put nonsense and expect to pass, you see. Your law must be sound. You, this is the format for you just to pass. Okay, Just to pass meaning you will pass. And maybe if you have written well, the examiner like the way you write, you can get a C. Or maybe a B. I have students who got a B or whatsoever also. Okay, Evidence also, same format. If you don't want to write the brief facts, okay, no issue. Just say the question above requires to discuss on what? Or based on the question given, it requires then go directly follow. I, what is the issue? L, how, how you apply and your conclusion. You, okay, one more thing. Huh? You must have a conclusion. Right or wrong doesn't matter. That is your stand how you justify. But without a conclusion, you expect your examiner to choose that. And not. some of them don't like it. So they feel that, okay, so what's the conclusion? Can, cannot. Order, order 14 granted, not granted. If granted, we cause, we don't cause. What is the thing? What You must tell me a conclusion. You cannot just, okay, la, I give you everything, you choose. You cannot do that. Okay, you need to give, whether right or wrong is a different story. Eh? That is up to y'all how y'all answer the question properly. Okay, okay, we will go through the, I will ask y'all to read first. Using the same format, leave the brief facts out. Please identify the issue. It's question one. Let me share with y'all. Can you all see? <clears throat> okay, July 2013, question one, A and B. July 2013, question one, A and B. Why I'm choosing this question, I'll explain to you all later why I'm choosing this question. Okay, I'll give you about 15 minutes, lah, up to nine, up to 10 o'clock. Please read this question and you all identify for me what is the issues in this. This is injunction, huh? purely injunction question, but maybe there's other issues in this question. Please read this question and you let me know what are the issues here, just to see whether you can identify or you cannot identify the issues. 15 minutes, huh? then I'll go through in detail what does the question require. Can you all see? Can you all see the screen? Yes, please. Scan. Okay, thanks.
Okay, can we start? Can, can? Can. Yeah, can, can. can. Now, if I open the slides, this thing will close, is it? The question? Ah, yes. Mm. So, how do we go about now? Okay, who don't have the questions? Can you all open at your own laptop or what so that I can open the slides for the answers. Ken, is it okay? All right.
Can you all see the slides? Okay. okay. Normally, my normal class, we don't do slides. What my normal class will do, I'll ask my students to write a full answer. Not point form, huh? full answer. So now, my class, they have around seven years past year question that they have done with full answer. That's what I've started in March. So here I have to do in slide because the group is bigger. Okay. First thing, huh, before I give you all my answer, let me just ask you. Let's identify. Okay, I'll read the question first. Then we identify the parties. This is very important. Huh? This is very important. This is another thing. This thing is also very important for your evidence paper. For evidence, you need to identify the parties first, then your nature of trial, whether civil or criminal. That is the two points you need. But here, because it is civil, no issue. You identify the parties. How many suits are involved here? You can see there are two suits, okay? So let me read the question first for you. Katie was the registered owner of a piece of land. In 2009, she discovered that her land was being registered in the name of her daughter-in-law, Sarah. Katie filed an action at the High Court against Sarah for a fraudulent transfer of land and sought an order that Sarah is to transfer the land back to her. Okay, first part. First paragraph, any issue. I can't see the chat box. Any issue in the first part? Any dates you all want to take into account? Any issue? Okay, no issue. Huh? I, I'll follow your answer, then we go through my answer. Pending the trial of the action, please highlight pending the trial of the action, Sarah sold the land to a third party in 2011 without Cathy's knowledge. You have to highlight that point. She sold, Sarah sold the land to a third party in 2011 without Cathy's knowledge. Cathy passed away in December 2012. Cathy named her son David as the executor of her will. David has yet to obtain a grant of probate from the High Court. Any issue? Paragraph number two. Minor issue. Any issue do you all think? Okay, I will highlight one issue. If you have any other issue, you highlight to me back. Or you put in the chat box or what. Okay. What I can see from paragraph number two is David as the executor of her will has yet to obtain a grant of probate from the High Court. Yes, correct. Yet to obtain a grant of probate. Those students are participating. That is first <clears throat> issue, all right? The third paragraph, David came to know in April 2013 that the land is now registered in the name of a third party. Date, April 2013, name registered in a third party, uh, sorry, land registered in the name of a third party. Concern that Sarah may dissipate the asset further, David immediately applied in the action commenced by Cathy for an interim Mareva injunction to restrain Cathy from disposing the sale proceeds of the land. Any issue? Anything? Okay. I please highlight David immediately applied in the action commenced by Cathy for an interim Mareva injunction to restrain Sarah from disposing the sale proceeds of the land. Okay, what you understand by the first part? The first part where in the action commenced by Cathy. That means in your first suit, okay, between Cathy versus Sarah, okay, in that action, he applied for a Mareva interim Mareva injunction. That is what you need to take note now. First, I'll go through the slide slowly, shortly. Yeah? First suit, David immediately applied in the action commenced by Cathy for an interim Mareva injunction to restrain Sarah from disposing the sale proceeds of the land. First, second one, second issue, okay? Before the application can be heard by the High Court, David commenced a fresh action against Sarah on behalf of the estate of Cathy for a declaration that the sale proceeds of the land belongs to the estate of the Third issue. If students can identify, just put in your chat box. I'm just checking whether you all can identify or not, okay? 
third issue. Please highlight before the application can be heard by the High Court. David comments a fresh action. So what application is this? What application they're talking about? The Mariv, the interim Mariva injunctions application in the first suit. That is what they're talking about. Okay, you need to take note because this is where later on you need to counter. David comments a fresh action against Sarah. So now it will be your second suit, David versus Sarah, on behalf of Estate of Cathy for a declaration that the sales proceeds of the land belongs to the estate of Kenny. Okay, this is the other issue. Next, on an ex parte basis, David applied in the fresh action. Which, which fresh action? The second suit. Okay, not the Kathy suit, the second suit. For a similar Mariva injunction, as in the application he had filed in the action commenced by Kathy. So what they're trying to tell, in the first suit, he has applied for an interim Mariva injunction. Similarly, for his own suit that he has instituted against uh, Sarah, he also applied a similar Mariva injunction on an ex parte basis. In the, in the ex parte application, that means your new application, huh, David did not disclose that a similar Mariva, a similar interim application was filed in another high court. Okay, he did not disclose this. Another issue, please take note, he did not disclose. Because you must understand, injunction is equity, under equity. Okay, so when you ask or when you apply for an injunction, it's very important to make a full and frank disclosure. Okay, furthermore, this is an ex parte injunction. All right, so neither did David explain why notice Neither did David explain why notice of the ex parte application could not be given to Sarah. Please highlight issue. So your entire paragraph three, you have a lot of issues. You can see there's a lot of issues. So that is why the allocation here 17 marks. You must understand. So you cannot tell the examiner, you cannot tell her, oh, I've answered, I did Mariwa, I've set it, I've put setting aside, but I never get my 17 marks. Of course, you won't get 17, at least 13 or 14. I did not get my 13 or 14. Why? Because you never identify one by one. What do you do? Immediately set aside. Go to Mariwa injunction. What is the rule? Why never comply? Set aside. Cannot do that. You have to go through one by one. Okay? So the entire thing when you are doing for your exam, you need to identify like this. Okay, how many issues are there? You need to take some time to digest the question itself. All right? So on 19-4-2013, the High Court in the fresh action granted the ex parte Mariwa injunction and fixed the matter for an inter parte hearing on 8-5-2013. Okay? Okay, what you must understand here, 19-4, he granted, I mean the court granted a Mari, ex parte Mariwa injunction. Okay, please take note, huh? if you open your rules of court, if you open your rules of court, order 29, Please open huh? order 29, rule 1, 2, capital B. Any interim injunction obtained on an ex parte basis shall automatically lapse 21 days from the date it was granted. Okay, so here on 19.4, High Court in the fresh action granted the ex parte Marewa injunction. So when it lapsed, you need to calculate the 21 days. You need to know, although it's not here, because it'll be easier for you to identify. Later, we'll go through the slide one by one. So you need to calculate when and fix the matter for inter-parties hearing on 8-5-2013. Okay, please open your statute book once again. Can you go back to order 29, rule 1, subsection 2, capital B, capital A. Look at it, 2 capital B, capital A, an ex parte interim injunction must be served within 7 days of the date of the order. So let's say I obtain an ex parte injunction, Mariwa, whatsoever injunction, doesn't matter. If I obtain it today, within 7 days, I must serve it on the other side. That is your first point. 
and please look into the rules huh? and the court when granting the order must fix a date to hear the application inter partes within 14 days from the date of the order okay, this is the rule okay this is the rule they must fix a date to hear the application inter partes that means both party dr chi has already put the meaning there already what does it amount to okay inter partes means both party must be present the court will look into it and see whether the ex parte that was granted correct or not i mean putting in simple terms okay to hear the application inter partes within 14 days from the date of the order. If you look at our question, 19.4 High Court granted, correct? And fix the matter for inter partes hearing on 8.5. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, first, second, third. 14 cases on the third. By right, by the third, they should have fixed it, correct? But here they fixed on 8, 5, 20, 13. Okay. You cannot tell it's wrong huh? because this is the court's discretion. The one that is given to you here, yes, it is within 14 days. But here it's a court's discretion. I understand that what, I mean, some students will be telling, oh, but the rule states this. But you see, you cannot overrule. The court has discretion and then I need to do rule for, I can fix. I still fix for you, but I fixed it on 8, 5, 20, 13. This is not an issue. But the seven days, whether the order was served or not, that is an issue here. Okay? So if you look at the next, please highlight huh, that entire paragraph, one, two, three, four. The entire paragraph is important. Okay? On 19 4, 2013, the High Court in the fresh action, grant, eh, sorry, granted the ex parte Marewa injunction and fixed the matter for an inter parte hearing on 8 5, 2013. On 6 5 2013, Sarah was served with the ex parte Mareva injunction. She intends to apply to set aside the ex parte Mareva injunction and to oppose at the inter party hearing. So if you look at last, the last paragraph, on the 6th of May 2013, Sarah was served with the ex parte. By right, within seven days from 1904, you should have served me out of time. She intends to apply to set aside the ex parte Mareva injunction and to oppose at the inter partes hearing. What you can do in your paper, in, and you can put in a bracket when 8 5 2013, when the hearing is set on 8 5 2013, she wants to oppose this thing. Okay, this is what you need to take note in this question. Okay. Okay, whether the seven days include the day the ex parte was granted. Okay, you need to go back to your order three, rule five, and check for the answer for this thing. Okay, the thing is, Dr. Chi got explained last time on this. Normally, we will count the next day. Okay, one day before you cannot include. All right, let's go into the question. Let's go into the answer first. Let me explain on the answer first to you all, then. Can you see? Uh, why you cannot? First, you need to do this. Uh, easier for you all to... How do I... Okay. First, you have to identify the parties in the question. Okay. So, the first suit I put here already, 2009, Cathy versus... Sarah for fraudulent transfer of land. Second suit, 2013, David versus Sarah for a declaration sale of proceed belongs to C's estate. This is just my term. Huh? However you want to do it, it's up to you. Why I put like that, easier to answer the question later on. Okay? Can? All right. So next we go into the So identify the Issues. So, what are the issues here? Because now I've already highlighted to you all. First one, David as an executor yet to obtain a grant of probate. Okay, you must understand huh? this is not the main issue, although they have put in this question here. Okay, just a matter of style huh? whether you want to do your setting aside Marewa first or you want to do this first. If I, I will do my setting aside first. Why? Because I don't want to waste time on this because this is not the main issue. 
this is just the uh, Rudy, I mean, any salary issue to this thing. So I will do my Mareva first, the setting aside, the opposing and inter-parties hearing. Then I go down and write one part. It should also be noted that David is yet to obtain a grant of probate. Then the case of Mayafa Chetty or whatever case that you all know. Okay, another one more thing. Huh? It doesn't matter if I and you all, I mean, I and you have a different case or a different, totally different case doesn't matter. Okay. What is important here is just the principle and your rules of court. If your case have a similar principle with mine, doesn't matter, please use your case. For me, if I do 10 injunction question, I will use the 10, same 10 case. Why? Because I don't want to forget. I only will use that case. For me, new cases, like what I told my students in the other class, new cases only if there is a change in law, please go ahead and remember. If there's no change in law, you are just endorsing it, okay? You are just endorsing the other people. Don't have to. Unless you can remember your memory is good, you can remember that is well and good. But if you cannot, don't force yourself to remember, okay? More than enough because they also have no time to see, oh, the students have put this. Yes, if you write, it is good. But it is not required because there's no change in the law whatsoever, all right? So you can see David as an executor yet to obtain a grant of probate. April 2013, David came to know the land is registered on the name of the third party. Okay, here, why did I put an extric, extric, bona fide, purchaser, NLC? You see, this question also covers on that. But for the purposes of your civil procedure, I don't want to answer about that. I don't care. Because end of the day, for me, I want to answer the question that is given by the examiner. Whether he's under 340, subsection 3, proviso, or not, or what, I don't care because I don't have the time. For me to do the setting aside itself will take me 30 minutes. I have question B to answer. So that is why I put here because I know some of you will ask, oh, but bona fide purchaser, how never answer. No need. You see, certain scripted answer that is given to you all is just for the purposes of your understanding. It's not necessary for you to put everything. In. You must be smart now what to put in, what not to put in. Okay? So the third one applied for an interim Mariva injunction. Yeah, this is what uh, the, I asked you all to highlight one where he applied for an interim Mariva injunction to prevent her from disposing the sale of proceeds. Okay, this is the first suit. Second one, issues in the second suit. Before the injunction application for the first suit can be heard, commence a fresh action against Sarah on behalf of the estate of Cathy for a declaration. Okay. In this suit, ex parte basis applied for fresh Mariwa injunction. No disclosure by David. Okay. No explanation as to why no notice of the ex parte has been given. 194 ex parte Mariwa injunction was granted and matter was fixed for an inter parties hearing on 8 5 2013. Okay. Then on 6 5 2013, Sarah was served with the ex parte Mareva injunction. I have already summarized for you all everything and put these other issues. Okay. So Sarah intends to set aside the ex parte on an and oppose at the inter parte hearing. Okay. You must understand huh? there is two issues in that question. That means you have to answer two things. The first one advise Sarah both on points of procedure and merits in setting aside. The ex parte Mariva injunction obtained by David, correct? The first one. So you go on the setting aside how you obtain the ex parte. You know? The second one, oppose granting the Mariva injunction on an inter partes basis in the fresh action. Okay? So there is two. If let's say you only identify the setting aside and you don't identify your part B, the second one, whether you will get the marks or not. Of course not. Because allocation is already given. Part A, so much of marks allocated. Part B, so much of marks allocated. So you cannot tell uh, that I answered part A already. What? By right, I should have gotten the whatever marks that I've answered. No, cannot. Because you never do part B. So please read your question. Read your question very well. Okay? So you can see the first one. Okay, before then, uh, you all understand uh, what's happening in the question. Do you all understand the story or not? Because I cannot see. I cannot see you all in the chat box and so hold on. Uh. The rest the rest with the camera that is not on. Can you all how do I? 
Because it's very important to understand this question. You all understand? Can? All right. Okay. CFA. CFA. Singapore, right? For you, can la. Okay, can someone please mute? CFA is a bit. Yeah, it's very hard. I think it's Miss Parati. Three hundred hours. One paper, total three. How do I mute? Can you mute her, Miss? Yeah. Done. Okay. Okay. I will show you by a slide, and also I will show you a full answer how it is written. So you all know how to write a full answer in your exam. Okay, so you apply the law. So for example, the first one, this is how you can, this is a simple way how do you start, okay? Based on the above question, Sarah is advised that there are several grounds to set aside the ex parte Marewa injunction that was obtained by David in the fresh suit on 19-4-2018, okay? According to Order 29, Rule 1 to A, Rules of God. Okay, you see, huh? I, by right, I shouldn't put this. ROC cannot. Okay, what should I have written? Rules of God, bracket, herein after referred to as ROC 2012. Okay, this one for your purposes, that's why I put like that. After you have written that way, then you go to ROC 2012 or what. Don't starting itself, you put like this. Okay, please put herein after or... Uh, Whatever, lah, whatever word you want to use is known as ROC 2012. Okay, so you can see an ex parte injunction is valid for 21 days and Sarah is advised to set it aside by 10-5-2013. Okay, so that's what I put. It's advised to set aside by 10-5-2013. This is just the first point I already explained. No case. I got no case, nothing. You want to put case? Can, no problem. So first and foremost, this is how I start. First and foremost, Sarah is advised that the granting of an interim injunction is governed under Order 29, Rules of Court 2012. Okay, put here. And it is prudent to assess whether David's application did indeed satisfy the requirement under Order 29, Rule 1, Subsection 1, B, 2, B, A, Rules of Court. I put one shot. This is just once again as a matter of style. You can have a different style. I can have a different style. As long as you have these orders inside. Okay, I, while I'm doing this, I will also explain your rules of court to you. Huh? This is an ex parte. Your order 29 only governs your ex parte injunction. Doesn't matter any type of injunction. It is under order 29 ex parte. Ex parte meaning that only when it's urgent and there's any form of secrecy, then you go by way of order 29. That means you need to satisfy the court. You need to tell the court why I cannot serve the notice. Why? Why? You need to tell. You need to convince the court to grant you that ex parte. So you need to put all that. So ex parte is just an exception. You know, Always you must try to go with inter parties. You must always try to serve. That is why your burden is much higher when you are going by way of an ex parte. Because why? The court is granting you the injunction without the presence of the other party. The court is not hearing the other party's merit or whatever they have to say. That is why it's only valid for 21 days and during the inter parties hearing, they will decide whether to discharge or to give the injunction until the main suit is heard in full or until another a further order. This is up to the judge. We won't have a certain answer. Or oh, until when it lasts? Until when? No. Inter parties is always inter parties, huh? please, please take note. Inter parties is always on the judge's discretion. Normally it's until the suit is heard, the main suit is heard, we will give you the inter parties. Why? Because we want to maintain status quo. We don't want anything to change during the uh I mean, before the trial is heard, we want to maintain status quo. We don't want anything to change. So that is the reason why normally your inter-parties will be given, your inter-parties injunction will be given up to your trial or your further order. Because they want to see what's the story in the main suit, whether the injunction you need or you don't need. Okay? So you need to go through. So you can see your order 29. I'll go through a quick one. Now please open, please open your order 29. <clears throat> okay, an application, y'all are with me? Okay. 
Dr. Chi, please help me, ah, because I cannot see them, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I cannot see the chat box, especially the other students. I can okay. See. okay. I did, I did. Yeah, now, okay. Ah. An application for the grant of an injunction may be made by any party to a cause or matter before or after trial. This is the important point you have to highlight in your statute program. So they can even grant you before or after the trial. Please highlight. Even after the trial. Can you see? Even after the trial of the cause of matter, whether or not a claim for the injunction was included in that party's originating process, counterclaim, or third-party notice as the case may be. So whether you have put in the need for the injunction or not, they don't care, they will grant you this thing. Why? Because it is urgent. It normally, especially with Mariwa injunction, they are scared, okay, you may dissipate the asset or what. So they grant you as soon as possible. You just convince me, I grant you so you can serve it. You can do it. You can make sure that it doesn't uh, catch out your asset or whatsoever. You need to know the reason behind this thing. Number two, this is where they explain, huh? such application may be made by notice of application supported by affidavit where the case is one of urgency. Please highlight where is the case of one of urgency, comma, may be made ex parte. So only during urgency, it can be done during, uh, it can be done ex parte, urgency or secrecy. Okay. Affidavit in the F2A, affidavit in support of your application made ex parte must contain a clear and concise statement. Number one, the facts giving rise to the claim the facts giving rise to the application for an interim injunction, the facts relied on to justify the application ex parte, including details of any notice given to the other party, or if notice has not been given, the reason for not giving the notice. So you see, you need to explain why in your affidavit when you're applying, why I cannot give this notice. If I give this notice, this fellow will run away. He will have this knowledge. Or if I have no time to give that notice due to limited time, that is why I'm applying. All this you must state, you know. That is why they're telling the facts relied on to justify the application X. You need to put, you need to put everything one by one, okay? Then any answer by the other party to the claim or application. So sometimes got, sometimes don't have. E, any facts which may lead the court not to grant the ex application ex parte. You see, you know something that you are doing is fishy. Okay, you know if I disclose this in my affidavit, the court will not grant me. So you don't want to disclose. That means there's no full and frank disclosure. If you don't disclose, technically you're going against this rule. If the case law aside, huh, we're just talking about the rules first. You are going against this rule. This rule is a mandatory rule. Okay, Any facts which may lead the court not to grant the application. So you must disclose because you are going ex parte. F. Any similar application made to another judge and the order made on the application. So you, same like our case. Did you tell in your affidavit that there was a similar Marewa injunction that you have applied in Cathy's suit? In our case, no. You never mentioned about So that is the point they want you to do. So let's say like, we just put in one case, whatever case, like, we just put in one case. But you didn't highlight this point. I take another student who don't have the case, but highlighted this point and put based on the facts, this mirrors rule, whatever is it, Therefore, the plaintiff has breached this rule. Mr. David has breached this rule. Enough. You get your point. You get your marks because that is what they are asking. You get me? So, easiest way for you to do an affidavit, if you want to put, you put in rule 2A, A to G. Just put in that way, A to G. Then you state which one was not complied with. So, at least you are giving an impression to the examiner. I know my affidavit requirement is important, is mandatory. But based on my question, my client, as in David, didn't comply with this rule. Then you want to substantiate with your case, can. But let's say you don't want to substantiate with the case, doesn't matter. Lah. No need to be so this one. Doesn't matter because you already answered the question already. You see, you, you understand the thing. Right? 
And the last one, what do you want? The precise, ready, fat is sort. What do you want? That means you want this injunction. For what? By when? Until the end of it. So you must put every... And every day with, you must understand. Uh, not only for here, lah, any every day with, whether your summary judgment every day with, or your normal every day with, any every... Something when you're telling the story to the judge, you know, why you want this order. Why you want order in terms on this application. You're just telling a story, but in a proper way, in a proper format. Okay, this is what happened, this is what happened, this is what the defendant has done, this is what. So this is what I'm asking you for, or this is what I'm asking the court to give me, this relief. So you must be precise. You don't have to write in length, but you just have to be precise what you want. Just cannot put case law on. Huh? That is not your affidavit. Your affidavit is not for your case law or whatsoever. Just put in what you want, your facts, so on. All right? So this is the part which is very, very important you must comply with, okay? The next one, 2B, unless earlier revoked or set aside. That means it is granted for 21 days, correct? But <clears throat> unless earlier revoked or set aside, the interim injunction obtained on an ex parte or, uh, application shall automatically lapse in 21 days. Unless it is earlier revoked. So some uh, you, you apply to set it aside within, I mean, before the 21 days or what. That is what we're trying to do. 2BA, an ex parte interim injunction must be served, please highlight, <coughs> within seven days from the date of the order, which I've already highlighted to you in the question. Correct? Because now there's no seven days. It is more than that. Ex parte interim injunction must be served within seven days of the date of the order. And the court, when granting the order, must fix a date to hear the application inter partes within the 14 days from the date of the order. Okay, let me just highlight another issue here. Let's say the inter partes hearing is postponed after the 21 days. Okay, because as you know, an interim injunction is valid for 21 days. Let's take to the uh, let's take first June. First June, 21st of June, it is valid. Interim in, uh, inter parties hearing is fixed on 14 of June. For some reason, the inter parties hearing cannot take place. It is postponed to 28 of June. It is after your 21 of June, correct? So with, between 21 to 28, there is seven days gap, correct? In that seven days gap, there is no injunction. So what you must apply for, or what you must apply for, for an ad interim injunction, your case of RIH, tangible services, or whatsoever, okay? Any case, any case doesn't matter. So I don't want to talk about the cases. Okay, one more thing. Right? Why I don't want to mention so much about the cases? Because all of you are from different, different backgrounds. Some of you are private students. Some of you are attached to a certain. So all of you will have different, different cases. Doesn't matter, you know. As long as your principle is similar to me. So let's say now I'm going to mention one case and you don't have the case, you will panic. So that is why I don't want to go so much on the case. Okay. Mm. So that's the reason why I don't want to go. My case are all in the answers that I'm going to give you. You can use that case if you're comfortable. If you're not comfortable, no problem. You just use your own cases. Okay? All right? Yeah, stop at increase injunction. Okay. So the between the 21st to 28th, okay, between 21st to 28th, you don't have an injunction. So you apply for an F in P injunction. Let's say in that 28th or so, your hearing is postponed. Because you cannot expect the court uh, just because they give you one date, they cannot postpone the date. No, there may be few postponement because they are not free. Do you have to reapply for an injunction again? Do you re do you sorry? Do you have to reapply for an ad interim injunction again? So it's no. An ad interim injunction is valid until the disposal of your interparties hearing. The case of your loman. Okay, I don't want to use the cases. Loman. Okay, it's one of it. One of the cases is loman. Okay, so you understand how your ad interim injunction works. Someone is asking a question. Could you kindly list what is Lafaro? Okay, this one is the uh, requirement. Leave it to me. Uh, okay. <laughs> Leave it to me. I put in the check. Down, huh? Okay, all right. So, when we have done, okay, when I stop at interim injunction, you don't have to reapply once again. Okay, you don't have to reapply once again. So, it works up to your interpartial hearing until the judge 
uh, the registrar also uh, whoever who hears that junction application. That's all. So during your interparties, the judge will decide whether to grant or not to grant. Uh, 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 I mean, sorry, to whether to grant or not to grant an injunction during the interparties hearing. Okay, that is where I'm covering for your 2BA. Please take note huh, because I'm covering one by one that way. 2C, okay, 2C, a court shall not grant an injunction on an ex parte application if the effect is to stop the holding or progress of a meeting of a body corporate society, an association, a union, an organization, a club or any other body of person, however constituted or name. Okay, so this one is like a bar. That means I will not grant you the injunction if the reason for the injunction is to go through this part. Okay, third one, the plaintiff may not take such an application before the issue of the The plaintiff may not make such an application before the issue of the originating process. That means your read, except where the case is one of the one of urgency. What they're telling that you must issue your originating process first. General rule: you must issue, then you go with your injunction application. However, okay. However, in some situation where you require urgency or secrecy you can proceed without issuing your originating process. You proceed to apply for injunction first ex parte. Then we see where the case is one of urgency and in that case, the injunction applied for may be granted on such term, if any, as the court thinks fit. And, and uh, take note of the word and, uh, and if the originating process is not issued within two days of the granting of the injunction, or such other period as the court thinks fit, the court shall have an application by a defendant discharge the injunction. So after that, you have to issue your injunction. Sorry, you have to issue your originating process within two days. This is a mandatory rule. You need to take note. Huh? And your last one is your an order for an interim injunction shall be in form 53. This is important. Okay. This is important. Please take note. So this is a summary of your injunction. I have actually done like a mini, mini, mini class for you by putting, of course, I don't have cases and all because my cases is all inside here. Why I choose this question is because this is a very good question where it covers most of the important part of your injunction area. You need to know. Okay. So now I will go into the question. Dr. Chi, you answer him. Huh? I'll go into the question. Okay, first. Okay, okay, sure. First and foremost, first and foremost, Sarah, did I read this? Yeah, first and foremost, Sarah is advised that the granting of an interim injunction is governed under Order 29 of the Rules of Court. And it's prudent to assess whether David's application did indeed satisfy the requirement under Order 29, Rule 1, Subsection 1 to 2 B A. Pursuant to Order 29, Rule 1, Subsection 2 and Order 29, Rule 1, Subsection 2, it is stated that an application for ex parte interim injunction can be made in a situation of urgency and secrecy by way of notice of application supported by affidavit. Got error in spelling uh, here. Please take note by affidavit. Order 32, Rule 1, Rules of Court. On the facts, in April 2013, David came to know that the land is registered in the name of... ...in a third party, and he commenced a fresh action against Sarah for a declaration as to the proceeds of sale of land and a similar Mariva injunction as applied in Cathy suit. In the case of third Chandri's shipping, there is a rebuttable presumption that when a party is applying for a Mariva injunction, it is a situation of urgency and secrecy. So I put here there is a rebuttable presumption. However, nothing on the facts seems to indicate 
that this is a situation of urgency that requires David to proceed by way of an ex parte application instead of inter partes as there appears to be no risk that Sarah will be dissipating with the sale of proceeds as she is still within the jurisdiction as an F international was in Zainal Abidin. However, moreover, there is nothing to suggest that David has given undertaking as to damages to the court as it as it is one of the fundamental requirements for an ex parte injunction called SINSA. Hence, it appears that there is no reason for David to proceed by way of ex parte and should have served the notice under Order 29, Rule 1 to AC and proceed by inter parties. Okay, why I put in this way? Okay, why I put in this way? Because if you look at the facts, they never mention that Sarah is not there or what. Sarah, yes, she has done some fraudulent work or whatsoever, but she is still within the jurisdiction. So why you need to go by way of ex parte? There's nothing mentioned. So now I need to advise who is here? Sarah, how to set aside, correct? So my client is Sarah, not David. So that is why I'm telling there is nothing to suggest that, where is it? That she is out of jurisdiction or whatso whatsoever. I use this case, SNF International. So if she is there, you can serve the notice to her and all the proceeds are there. Why you are so, this one to go by way of ex parte, you could have served the notice and go by inter partes. So that is what I'm trying to explain on this part. Then you apply the, the same thing that I gave you all just now, Bila, that's what I'm using here. Okay. So the next part here will be, Subsequently, it is also stated on the facts that in an ex parte application, David did not disclose of the similar interim application that was filed in another high court and neither did he explain as to why no notice was given to Sarah. This clearly contravened Order 29, Rule 1 to A, C, I, I choose them, C, E and F, wherein there was no full and frank disclosure by David for the said equitable relief relied on. I use this case, Motorsports versus Delfon. It should be noted that those who seek for equity must come with clean hands. You don't want to use this maxim, don't use. I just add on. Nothing, huh? they won't even give me extra mark for this. Okay, I just add on only. All right. And then next, pursuant to Order 29, Rule 1 to B A, it is stated that an ex parte interim injunction must be served on the other party within seven days from the date of the order. 19 4, 2013. Hence, the order must be served by 26 4, 2013. However, on the facts, service of the order was only made on, done on 6 5, 2013, and David had clearly breached the rules in Order 29, Rule 1 2 BA of the ROC. Therefore, Sarah is advised that she can set aside the ex parte Mariva injunction for non compliance of the actually above mentioned rule, but I put of the rules as to the reason stated above. BBMB versus Lorraine Osman. Let's say you cannot put in so much of cases, cannot remember. Never mind, don't bother. Your main case has to be there. Maybe you don't want to put in BBMB, Lorraine Osman, don't put, but of course, that this one, all you have. At least you need to know like Del Motor Sports versus Delcon, full and frank disclosure. You just need to know one or two. Okay, so this is the first part of the one. And I went through with you one by one, one by one on the issue. This is what I have put in your know, answer sheet, uh, answer thing. All right, how about the next one? Okay, this is important. Huh? This part. Sarah to oppose the granting of a Mariva injunction on an inter-party species in the fresh action, correct? So now there is an inter partes hearing, correct? She wants to oppose that. The issue what they're asking here, the issue here they're asking whether can she oppose the Marewa injunction during the inter partes hearing because they, David, the ex parte injunction was granted. Her concern here would be the, I mean, the examiner wants you to answer whether a fresh, whether the court will make a fresh consideration as to the new injunction or the consideration is as a result of an extension of your ex parte injunction. Because you must understand the ex parte injunction granted already. So are they going to use a similar reasoning here and also grant the Marewa, uh, Marewa injunction during your inter parties hearing or no? You come before me 
a fresh, I will consider everything freshly when two of you are there. That is what the question is asking you. Okay, so if you look at the answer, based on the facts, the inter parties hearing is fixed on 8 5 2013, and the issue here is to advise Sarah whether she can oppose the granting of the Mareva injunction in the inter parties hearing. In the case of Lim Hien Ping, uh, Justice Edgar Joseph Jr., referred to the case of Dong Will, which held that in the circumstances existing when the matter comes before the court inter parte, justice requires an order either continuing the ex parte injunction or the grant of a fresh injunction, such an order can be made notwithstanding the earlier failure of the plaintiff to make such disclosure. What does it mean? This simply means that the non-disclosure in the earlier ex parte has no effect of the to the fresh application. So if you see the first one, he has breached all these rules, correct? Which we have discussed. But now when the matter comes inter partes before the court to consider, they will disregard your earlier failure, your earlier whatever wrong or whatever mistake that you have done in your ex parte, the court will disregard that. Because why? Based on this case, Justice Edgar Joseph Jr. has stated, when it comes before me, inter partes, it's a fresh application. It's a fresh case. I will consider it based on the merits of the case itself, merits of the application itself. You see, I will not bother whether earlier you didn't do or what. That means, in another word, your ex parte has nothing to do with your inter partes. An ex parte is not an extension of your inter partes. They can change the wording. That's why I keep using different, different words. Okay. So if the injunction were to be, so if the injunction were to be granted during the inter partes hearing, that it is not an extension of the earlier ex parte injunction. Therefore. Sarah is advised that David has to convince the judge that his case falls within the realm and procedure to obtain a fresh Mareva injunction and the earlier non-disclosure has no effect to the current application. Can you all see? Can you all see how to write? That's why injunction question is something like if you know, you know. You don't know, you cannot do. It's not as easy as you think. Some questions are easy. Like your April 2020, they ask you on April, October, undertaking as to damages. Gosinka and I've just put undertaking as to damages, five marks given to the court, not to the defendant. The court has the power, uh, has the discretion whether to order for inquiry of damages or not. Finish. But if you have this kind of question, 18 marks question, 17, 18 marks question, you need to go through one by one. Okay, you need to go through one by one. Okay, one more thing I need to explain. Okay. Pat rented out her shop house to David and Daniel. That question. Can you hear me? Okay. If you look at that question, uh, Pat rented how you all read. Uh, question one, straightforward. Like, you will know. The procedure she should adopt to enter judgment against Daniel. 13 rule 4, subsection 1. But subsection 2, whether she can enforce the judgment against Daniel before obtaining judgment against David. Okay. This question, some of it, yes, it is in your book. Some of the institute did not give you the answer. You have to refer to your 13 rule 4 subsection 2. That's all your answer. That's all. Nothing, huh? don't have to substantiate with case or what. So you just have to put that order in, you know. If you go and put something else, no, cannot, judgment, affidavit set aside, not answering the question, forget it, gone. Three marks gone, huh? So you must understand 10 marks to pass. That is your bare minimum. Three marks gone. They are going to mark you out of seven. So out of seven, you see how to collect. Because you must know four marks, they won't give you full four. Correct? They will give you two and a half or maximum two and a half. I think three lah, maximum. So based on that, you need to out of seven for you to pass. I think, what are you going to do? You see, so that is why it's important for you to read this book. Read as in page 
at least at least the important order or the 13 or the 14 or the 12 at least the important order okay one more thing Sarah is to oppose. So we stop over here. Okay. Therefore, Sarah is advised, this is uh, until here, correct? Therefore, Sarah is advised, David has to convince the judge and that his case falls within the RAM and procedure to obtain a fresh Mariva injunction and the earlier non-disclosure has no effect to the current application. So other ancillary issue, remember, earlier we have went through this, I told you all, not so important. I, for me, my way of writing, I'll put it down. So whether David can sue before obtaining the grant of probate, Mayapa Chetty can sue but cannot obtain judgment until the grant has been extracted. That's it. If you want to write more, go ahead. But that's all you need to write. Okay. For that 17, 18 marks, that's all it is required. Okay. The next part, part B. What does part B asking me? Assuming that the High Court judge, High Court in the fresh action, sets aside the ex parte Mareva injunction, okay, and refuses to grant the Mareva injunction on an inter parties basis. So that mm -hmm. means our earlier advice as to setting aside, the judge has bought our argument, so they have set aside and refused to grant the Mareva injunction, correct? Now you are to advise David as to the steps he can take to preserve the estate claim against Sarah. Correct? Inter parties, both parties appeared. The judge, upon considering, look at the case of a dog wheel that we went through earlier. Upon considering everything, the judge is of the view that no, you never satisfy me. I am not going to grant you the inter parties injunction. Gone. Now, you are to advise David, your client is David. David, as to the steps he can take to preserve the estate claim against Sarah. What will you do in this kind of situation? What do you all think the answer should be? See who's your client. Your client is David. Correct? First, you appeal. Okay? You appeal on the order for dismissal. Then you either go for a stay or an arrangement injunction. That's the answer here. Why? You are going to help your client, David. Doesn't matter. We fight all the way up. Whether you want to see who you're advising. Okay? Whether grant or not, that's a different story. For your level, you'll just answer the question only. So you can see, since there is an order for refusal to grant the Mareva injunction, David is advised to appeal to the court of appeal. Under the Court of Appeal, whatever, it is stated there is a right to appeal without the leave of court for an injunction order. However, it should be noted that Order 55, 212 and Section 73 of the Court of Judicature Act clearly provide that an appeal does not operate as a stay of execution. Hence, David is advised to apply for an arrangement or stay pending appeal. Why I'm applying this? The purpose of the injunction is to maintain status quo pending appeal so as not to render the appeal negatory. This one, all this wording and all I've taken from Opal Sri Ram's document. You can go through or definitely it's inside your book. So in the case of Ui Meng Swa with Athena Universal, the court considered the principle in granting an injunction until the appeal is heard. Okay. What is the principle? Is there any special circumstances to grant the injunction? And to be mindful of the principle that a successful party ought not to be prevented from reaping the fruits of his success, even pending the opponent's appeal. So what they're trying to explain this part, they're telling you must understand that one person at one end, they have won. Another person, they have lost. So if you are going to grant this injunction, you want to hold someone's uh, success of appeal, there must be good reason why the stay is required. Because you're stopping someone who is uh, 
entitled, you know, who's entitled to get his judgment or whatsoever. So you have to go through this thing. Whether there's any probable reversal of the order of judgment. What is the effect of granting or refusal of the whether damages is a suitable remedy and the subject matter of the thing. So what you are asking, all these are the important, uh, what they call important requirements where the court will consider. This point directly I've taken from the judgment itself. That is why if you look at it, it is not the same with the book, directly from the judgment. It's the same, huh? the book is the same, the judgment is the same, no issue. Because when I was preparing, I took it directly. So a similar reasoning was also reached in the case of Subashini, wherein Section 44 allows the Court of Appeal to grant an interim relief following the case of Chong Hui Leong versus Levy. So applying the above principle and considering the above facts, David is worried that Sarah may dissipate with the proceeds of sale of land as the land is already sold to a third party. Furthermore, the cause of action for the first suit is for fraudulent transfer of the land against Sarah. Taking into account the above facts, the court may be in favour for granting the arrangement injunction pending appeal. Why I'm telling like that? Because my client is David. As I put, the court may be in favour in granting. But let's say my client is the other way. I will put, I will explain first whether there's any possibility or not looking at the facts. But if the question is open-ended like this, might as well I say may not be. Like how I put in the first question, if you see, oh, Sarah is not, is not out of jurisdiction. Therefore, there's no real risk of dissipating the asset. You must know how to play the game. Who is the who is your client? Okay. If you always think I only want one answer, yes, can, cannot. You cannot do that. Because the question will change. You need to follow who is your client. Okay, that's it. Okay, this is just the normal one. Okay, so this is how, this is the standard one that I put. Yeah, that's it. So if let's say, okay, let's say you're writing a full answer. How will it be? For this one, by slide, right? You all may not know how will it be. Let me just show you how will it be if it's a full answer. Can you all see? Yes. Okay. Okay, so you can see this is what I've written on the slide for your largest copy paste only. This is a full answer. Okay, this is nothing, nothing got to do with your exam. You are just identifying. This is very important, huh? even though we have nothing to do with the question, but at least you're identifying so that you will not make a mistake. Okay, Then apply the laws. Same, you can write an answer just like this. Huh? Remove the number three, remove apply the law. You put A to advise this thing. So this is how your answer will be. You can draw a line, no issue. Actually, you're making it clear to the examiner. This is what I'm going to answer based on this thing. So I put A, I put B. If you want to put Romans 1, Romans 2, can. Your wish, no problem. As long as you answer the question. So exactly what I've given you, this is what I'm writing in paragraph format. Same thing. So you can see for the first part, roughly one and a half page, roughly. Okay. So the second part, like this. Other in ancillary issue. The third part, the second part, B answer for the eight marks. That's all. This is an exact answer that you can use for your to answer your question. But if you think my answer is too long, feel free to just amend it or make it shorter. It's just up to y'all how y'all are going to do it. Okay. Ken, any issue? Any issue, injunction, very difficult. Yeah, very difficult. Last time I learned also very difficult, Miss. Frankly. 
It's not difficult. <laughs> it's very procedural. <laughs> How? Any issue? Okay, leave, leave the question aside. You have, you have answered, right? Have you answered? Uh, you most okay. of them. Okay. Because before I answer any question, other than that, any other issue that you all want to get, I mean, only with regards to injunction. Otherwise, if you ask me the entire law, I think it will take the whole day for me to finish it. Mm. Any other issue? Because you have to understand injunction question almost every year, almost. So if you're going to skip this, if it comes out in your first question, sankot. Confirm sankot. What you need to know, the problem is, what y'all are doing is, y'all are reading too much. Just too much. That's the problem. Y'all don't want to make it concise. Y'all don't want to make it simple. I think y'all believe that if I answer more, oh, I'll get more marks. No. Like, for example, there's now the one I put, uh, equit uh, injunction is an equitable belief. Those who, that one will not give me any extra mark, you know. I just put that word, that wording over there just to, just to maybe one line to impress. Even I don't put that, that word over, that doesn't matter because they're not going to mark me based on that. What they're going to mark me only based on my issues, whether I have pointed out my issues properly. That is why, I don't know you all, you all can highlight or not. Can you all highlight, uh, Dr. T, last time your time, last year? Can I highlight? Uh, your case? Can, can, can. can. Highlight your cases, highlight your statute. Please highlight because why? You are just, you are telling the examiner, okay, this is this, this is this. Okay, I've answered the question. Can you, can you, you are actually asking me, can you give me the marks? Because I've answered, please mark me. Please. Let's say you put in a 2023 case, lah, very chungy. Okay, that 2023 case, let's say it's on Anton Pillar. And your answer is on Mareva. Does it make any, does it make sense? Confirm wrong. You are giving an impression, which is, I don't know the law. Might as well, you just stay with whatever that you know, and you just proceed with it. That's what I feel that all my students, you can see from the start when they join me and until now, the answers are totally different. Okay, because why I've already trained, you just have to follow the BILAC rule. You will not go wrong. Huh? This was taught to me by my lecturer. Okay, you will not go wrong. At the same time, you will, your issues are there. Have identified, move on. Like for example, the NLC. I could have touched, but why I don't want? Because I think it's not required. For this question, it is not required. But if you... If you are a lawyer, you are, you are submitting in front of a court, of course, you have to touch all other areas. You can put in caveat, la, this one, la, that one. But I don't want to put all these things because why? I have no time even to identify the issues. Why should I put in all these things? You get me? So please only identify the issue, answer your question. One more thing, your Mareva, Kenten Pillar, Interlocutory, uh, sorry, Prohibitory, what other injunctions are there? Erringford or other type of injunctions, okay, that we are learning for the purposes of CLP. I'm only talking for the purposes of CLP. Eh? Please don't ask something which is very, uh, what do you call that? Uh, very practical one because it's not applicable for you all. You don't have to know. Okay, there's one question I want to uh, let you all know. There's one question on worldwide Mareva, okay? Worldwide Mareva. In another word, in another word, what they're asking in that question for the purposes of because I saw the answer that was given is worldwide Mareva. Where students asking, what does it mean by worldwide Mareva? But the question is only on post-judgment injunction. That's one question over there. I can't remember which question is it. Okay. Post-judgment injunction, no issue. No issue. The question, the if you look at the question, what they're asking you, can the court grant you a Post judgment, Mariva can cannot answer is in your order twenty nine rule one. When by your order twenty nine rule one, remember just now I asked I asked you all a question. So I mean I asked you all to highlight before or after the trial, before or after the trial. In that question, it was after the trial. Just use this. Just use this if you don't know the answer. Use your book. I, I really cannot remember what question is it. If I know later, I'll put in the group. A bit older question. Okay, so you don't have to know the practical aspect so much. Like what I told you all earlier. If you don't even know your, if you don't cannot even read your evidence act in full, your rules of court in full, why you want to, or your criminal procedure in full, why you want to take other country one? It's not required. Just use what we want 
what we want to do because you want to pass the exam and you want. Okay, you just please trust me. If you follow this way, simple way, it doesn't mean you will fail. Right? Definitely you will pass. But whether you will score is a different thing. Okay, a pass I think is more than enough. Like whether you will score a B, A or a B, it depends. Okay, A or a B, it depends. Okay, can any other question on injunction based on our question? Any other thing? Clear? Because you all, you all are not communicating with me. That's why. Yeah, students are free, free to ask questions, you know. Because Miss Nishani, until now, uh, I was chambering, I was still asking her question, you know. She's like a dictionary, seriously. Oh my God, you <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Huh? I'm not kidding. <laughs> if nothing, I have to leave. Eleven thirty. I have another one more today. Whole day, I'm full. Oh, so busy, Miss. Okay, yeah, okay, today, okay. Because I'm on leave three days. So oh, that's okay, why I okay, make okay. Use of the thing, so, so full yeah. force, lah. Having yeah, full force. Class. Yeah, so easy, lah. So that next week, I don't have to do for one week. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Done. Ken. That's you one. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Miss, okay. you know, okay. limitation issue will be relevant if the paper was set in, yeah, 12 years as far. 12 years, you must understand, is the judgment, you know. Hmm. I think she is saying the judgment, but this is not judgment, you know. This is Why the I issue. Why I cannot see? Uh? Why I cannot see? Who's asking? S N. S. Uh, yes, yes. What he's telling is correct. 12 years is the judgment. Yeah, but land issue... If there's any fraud, uh, no limitation. No limitation. Your party, no limitation. You know. yes, yes, yes. Uh, you need to understand. This is nothing got to do. I, I think you have um, misunderstood. Other than that, no issue. You, this, this question, nothing on limitation. Okay. Mm, fraud some more. Yeah. What are questions will normally compulsory to study? What, what other questions? Oh, I... To be honest, I don't do this. You know why? For me, you all have compulsory question. If I ask you all, okay, study this, study this. Something else comes out, it's not fair. For me, okay, if I ask me important thing, I will tell you, as far as I can remember, huh? 14, 14A, order 18, order 81. Sorry, order 18 is your entire pleading. Order 81, order 89, you need to know. Okay, what else? Uh... What else pleading? Order 18, do okay. Or entire order 18, you need to know in detail. In detail, huh? In detail, meaning your order 18, rule 19, you're striking out each limb you need to know. Your statement of claim, each thing, how to draft everything you need to know. Your order 19 to strike out, you need to know. I mean, sorry, order 19, your statement of defense. If you want to strike out or whatever is it, you need to know how it is done. Everything you need to know one by one. So your Whole order 18 is important. Important meaning you have to read from this book. You can see, when you read from this book, you can see I can answer the question. Definitely you can see. But if you try to find that, of course, of course, some question, of course, it is not answer, it's not in the book, it's not here, like that. You cannot do anything. What you are going to do? 